Pink Floyd. Completely new territory for me, honestly. I don't think I can mention a Pink Floyd song off the top of my head. So thank you if you are deciding to rejoin me and continue this beautiful musical journey. And if you're new here, welcome. What better place to start than right at the beginning? Album number one, The Piper at the Gates of Dawn. Quite an introduction that title alone makes. It's powerful. Song number one is Astronomy Domine or Astronomy Domine. I don't know how to pronounce it. Don't kill me. Our lead vocal is Barrett and Richard Wright. Right away, I can tell that they're amazing at building anticipation. This was such a perfect introduction into the Pink Floyd journey. I'm already hooked. I'm so excited for everything that's to come. This was so experimental and I can totally see why the word astronomy was in the title because it felt like we were in outer space, but it felt like we were in a rocket ship blasting off. They added a lot of really fun choices and sound effects. There was a lot of chromaticism going on in the pairing of that slide guitar, the effect of that with the organ. It just felt so surreal and celestial and cosmic and grand and great. I can't quite understand what's all being said or sung there, but it feels like that initial radio walkie-talkie soundbite before the launch. <laughs> Oh, and throughout the driving force of the drums are just exceptional. It kind of has this downward falling sense, a little bit monotonous, a little bit chromatic. <laughs> The way that all the instruments start playing off of each other is so intriguing and experimental. It's like the color purple is being brought to life. It feels so, so scary yet inviting. I love the way that the guitar just glides over everything. It really pulls forth a piercing and bold sound. <laughs> The way that they just did that stop and that silence, it's so eerie and it's like, what's happening right now? Definitely mind rattling. We can hear how the organ starts to pull in the sound a bit more and add that depth. Song number two, Lucifer Sam, lead vocal, Barrett. A little double O mystery action going on, secret agent.
experimental and maybe it's too soon to be trying to draw conclusions, but I have noticed a pattern just between these first two songs and it's that there's a bit more focus on the full musical journey of the song and more into the instruments as opposed to the vocal. The instruments created this cloud of chaos, yet even through the foggy fuzziness, they made it very easy to follow this path. And with this specific song, there was um, a bit more percussive elements, although in our first song, the drums did a lot. They really drove the song forth. But with this one, I heard some maracas. I heard that they brought back that organ, which is a great decision. <laughs> like that descending riff it kind of was what made me feel like this was a 007 secret agent mysterious setting <laughs> And the way they introduce the maracas is almost like we're being teased a bit. I love the way they fully play with and enjoy dynamics. It's like we're brought to moments where we have a decrescendo, and then we're brought moments that are explosive and bombastic. The best way for me to describe the bass, because I kept going back and forth between whether it's really rough or if it's super fine, and it's played with rugged finesse. It's what I decided. <laughs> imagine what it was like being alive at the time where this song was first released and being able to hear this on the radio for the first time. I'm sure it broke boundaries. There's a lot that I can imagine that's being released today that might pull some inspiration from this sound of Pink Floyd. It's so outrageous. It's very rock and roll, but it's also very galactic. It's like rock and roll of the cosmos. <laughs> Number three. We've got Matilda Mother, and our vocals are Wright and Barrett. So many overtones. I love this Middle Eastern-esque inspired twist in this song. A fun tempo shift moment. So it appears that they double down on the organs right and the vocal sound was very forward it was very present there was a lot of focus on it than the previous two songs and the vocals were amazing we had really beautiful harmonies and then we had really fun ones there was one in there that sounded like a whistle to me <laughs> The electric guitar's presence is so beautiful and shining. That harmony just melts like butter. Even just the vocal, our lead vocal started getting very playful with the melody. Da 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 very repetitive, very sequency. And then we had that whistle like harmony, just super high and unexpected. A clean, crisp, beautiful delivery on the slide. I'm always a fan of really well executed slides. The 
lyrics are really playful and fun. I love the story that's being told. I can just see the concert. I can feel the energy. I'm sure it was an absolute party, a total wreck. I can just see it in, in the best way possible, in the most rock and roll way. Numero cuatro, we have flaming and the vocal is Barrett. <laughs> was just enchanting and beautiful. They definitely did a 180 from their first two songs in terms of the vocals and the lyrics. There was so much attention and they were beautiful, beautiful vocals. Lyrics are so unique and curious and intriguing. They pulled a nice clash with the um, how the acoustic guitar pairs up with the electric guitar. They have great exploration in the world of the organs and the way that that sound communicates with the other sounds in the drums and in the percussion. There was heavy percussion in this song. They are so masterful and skilled with their percussion. I can tell just from four songs. It's I love how they use those howls and whistles to mimic the breeze of the air on a cold night. The organ's entrance feels like a door opening and a beaming light just shining through, blasting. <laughs> that cuckoo was fun. I feel like they incorporate a lot of elements like that that are really fun. <laughs> sense of mockery and tease could be brought about by the playful nature of this line or how it switches up and starts off pretty cheerfully and it slowly goes into a more dissonant direction. Too much, I won't touch you, but then I And so those last three notes played together form this kind of dissonant cluster. And even though they're not played together, in the song, they're played one at a time. Each one is slid into the next, carrying over the previous sound, allowing this eerie in-between to really pull through. Along with that ascension, we have this sort of ticking sound that is honestly skin crawling to me. It's giving me goosebumps that actually don't appear as goosebumps. It feels more like my skin is being tightened. Those chimes or those bells at the end, it has a very pretty sense. Although I know they're probably not going for pretty, it's very experimental and it's different and it's, it has its its scary moments, but it's it's beautiful. I think it's really pretty. It's the sky, you know, I can see the brightness of the day and the darkness of the night and all of the twinkles of the stars in between. Number five is a little bit more confusing for me. It looks like pow, r, talk, h, unless that's supposed to be power touch. I don't know, you tell me. And then it says for the vocals, we have instrumental wordless vocals by Barrett, Waters, and Wright. So we'll see what that means. <laughs> Love good smooth jazz.
so many unique characteristics to delve into. Now I know what they meant by instrumental wordless vocals. <laughs> very animalistic. <laughs> and this switch up was very easy, but also very drastic because we're going from this world of chaos and sounds and noises to smooth jazz. Actually pretty relaxing. <laughs> Then we have another musical interruption and it transforms again. It almost builds off of how this song begun with a lot of chaos and heavy dissonance and a lot of distortion. What I like about this chaos is that there's a sense of clarity and steadiness in the percussion. A climate of pandemonium and a total jungle was definitely created and established with this song. The very last song on this side is Take Up Thy Stethoscope and Walk. And this is also our very first song where we have Waters as our vocal. This one was the true chaos. I feel like at times the chaos slips away, at least from me. I felt like I was having flashbacks to Revolution 9 of the Beatles. The first thing that I understood right away was the doctor, doctor, and then there's a lot of percussive elements that are pulling through. So far, everything is going in the same motion, and I feel like that bass line is one of the most solid parts that's going for this song right now, and it's still pulling us in that same da-da-da, da-da-da, da-da-da motion. The lyrics give me a sense of slam poetry. <laughs> Here we're amping up the sound with a whole bunch of percussion, and it's gonna come to an explosion. And somewhere in this percussive twister of uh, electronics and guitars, and I just, I got a little bit lost. It feels a bit unhinged and like robot short circuiting, but I do like that it is very bright and very major. I love a good major moment, especially because they've delivered such wonderful minor songs already. So this was a really nice major moment. I feel like depending on your mood, this could be exactly what you need. This could be the perfect medicine that the doctor prescribed, right? Because this song is about doctor, doctor, so it's like some frantic patient. So if that's what they're trying to convey, like this patient that's just frantic for one reason or another, maybe it's someone who's just having anxiety about their health, you know, that's conveyed very well. It's very strategic and intelligent. But if you're in a more calm and centered, relaxed place, this might take you out of that. This might not be what the doctor prescribes for you. I feel as though the gates have swung right open and I've stepped right into Narnia with this. I was not prepared. This is not at all what I thought this was gonna be, but I'm not disappointed in the least. I think this is a pretty solid start and I'm really excited for what's to come. Now that I have an idea of the direction that Pink Floyd is taking us in, I'm really curious to see what side two is all about. I think I have an idea, but 
Side two is not the video that we have next. No, we have All Things Must Pass. George Harrison has been recommended to me over and over again, and I'm, I'm ready to do this. I'm ready to get into it. So here we come, post Beatles solo career albums. We got you. Thank you for watching and listening along with me. I appreciate each and every one of you. Stick around because this musical journey has taken quite a turn and I'm really excited to see what's ahead of us. Take it easy.